Welcome back. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. This is going to be a little bit of an adventure for myself and I hope for you as well. I have two mystery phalaenopsis that a friend of my daughter's has entrusted me with because she doesn't have time to repot and she grows in bark. So we're going to do something a little bit different today. I'm going to take you along and let's see what we discover. I have prepared <laughs> Here they are, the two little fowls. I've got a uh, black tea in the back there, Nyeh. that mug there. And down here I have two bowls. One is Calmag, this one Calmag and seaweed. And this one will be the black tea with the lemon. And I have a tad of seaweed. You can already see the discoloration in there in that bowl because I'm going to treat these two differently based on what I might find in the pots. So let's go with one and let me show you what I noticed straight off the bat before I even tackle this repot or revamp. And that is all these shiny glistening marks here. I don't know if you can pick up all the speckles there, all this shiny stuff right here. And I inspected it for bugs before I put it somewhere and I wasn't sure, I couldn't see anything. I don't see any signs of scale or anything on this one. So maybe there were some pests where she was living and it was falling on to the orchid. So this is something I look out for to see what I'm up against. Also the roots. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, we have something to work with, which is good. And she put seashells in her pot, so we will keep those and a crystal. That's pretty. We will keep those, put those aside, and put them back in the pot with the orchid that has them. So just on a quick inspection, I don't see many, many roots. The reason I have two different concoctions is because I thought I might have one a little bit more better off than the other one. This one is the one I'm most concerned about, but she still has a crown. She's still trying to grow. There is a leaf coming. It's just the whole root system is a little bit on the dodgy side, to say the least. So we'll save the rocks. Those were for counterweights for sure. And this one, in my thinking, is going to go into the tea and lemon solution because I only have aerial roots. And if I want to get them in a pot somehow, they might break, but I need them to be flexible. So this is the mystery. I'm going into Bark. She gave me a whole bag of supplies and we'll look at that when I finish processing these orchids and getting them ready to soak. We'll look into her bag and see what she's given me to work with and Despite my preferred grow method, these are not my orchids. So I'm going to respect what she would like to have and how she grows. First of all, let's get this one out. And then I'm going to also wash and sterilize the pot. Good, good, good. Air cones. That's awesome. But everything else is pretty much not the case. Let me make sure I've got a different camera angle today. Just make sure that I'm in shot. Yeah. So we have a lot of dead roots. Now my first thing would be to cut them all off. But based on the fact that there's a root inside, I may not be as radical so that there is some, some water absorption in the pot. But I definitely would like to get all this vellum off, which I can do bit by bit. Everything that's dead and nasty will have to come off. I'm going to leave the root fibers here the stringy ones. I'm going to leave those. They might help with anchoring afterwards. So I'm not going to be chopping away at this one 
radically at this point because, again, it's a mystery. It's not my grow method. They're going back in bark. As long as everything is clean and nice, then these little fibers of roots won't make any difference whatsoever. But what I do want to do is get her straight away into the tea and lemon solution. So let's have a look-see. Let's get this bowl up here. So there's about like one teaspoon to two liters of water in this. This is RO water and one teaspoon of seaweed. Then I'm gonna, this is one tea bag of English breakfast tea. And I have already put in like five, six drops of fresh lemon juice. So let's get that, give that a little bit of a stir and see what our pH is, if we need to adjust the pH. Now, seeing as I'm gonna soak these bare root, I do want the pH at around 6.3. So let's have a look-see. All right, let's get that down to 6.3. Now this is, this bottle says Kana on it, but it's not. I have NordBio pH down, which is not as strong a solution as Kana. Let's try seven drops first and see what we're at. With Kana, I need a lot less, but I find them rather expensive for me for the time being. So let's see, can you see that? 6.6, .6. oops, we don't like that number. So let's go one, two, three. Let's try this. The 6.3 is simply because of the fact it's right bang in the middle. It's a habit. This is more about the tannins and get the orchid to absorb some of those tannins, which are fabulous hormones for growth. See, three drops of the Nord Bio only gets me to 6.5. Three drops of Kana would have taken me all the way down to 6.1. Anyway, I'm going to get this right. You get the point, and I'll be back. That's fine. 6.3. Happy with that. And in you go, all of it as is, if I can soak as low as possible, that'd be great. Yep, stem and everything. I have a warm day today. I can do this and it's early enough in the day that the orchid will dry out. Is this angle better? I may need to turn her occasionally to get all the roots that are viable like this one as well inside. So we'll take that one out of the way and let's have a look-see on the next one. All right, this one still has that nursery plug in it. Oh, but we have some roots inside that we can work with. This is good. Ish. Positive thinking, positive thinking. If these were mine, I would not repot them at this point in time because obviously in my case, I would put them into LECA and self-watering. And then I would need to see more active root growth before I do that. But seeing as these are not mine and they're going into bark again, then it's okay to refresh them at this point in time. Get them ready so that when the new growth starts, they have nice shiny media fresh to grow into and see some root burn there. That's probably from the sun and water with fertilizer still left there to evaporate and dry. So yes, I'm going to be wiping the leaves down at the end. Right now it's time to get them in and get them situated in some nutrition. Same principle here. I'm not going to be removing the roots by cutting them. 
I will be peeling off the vellum. And, right, let's get that out of the way. And let's get some calcium, magnesium. I didn't check the pH. Silly me, silly me. That's okay, 6.1. That's all right. For the absorption of calcium and magnesium, that's perfect. So I'm going to put these away and let's have a look, see what she's got in the bag for me to work with. Right, what has she got? All right, substrate. Oh, new pots. Oh, what a sweetheart. She didn't have to do that. These are the pots that I actually already have also, but much smaller. So I might donate my other pots to her. Oh, and she has this Lekka. This Lekka floats. So for semi-hydroponic purposes, this is not the good stuff. But for aeration in a pot, it's perfect. So we can use that, that's amazing. And what else? This is what I'm a little bit dubious about. It's our classic orchid substrate here in Spain. And I will show you why I probably will have to do some adjusting with this one and what I'm going to do about it. Let's have a look, see. It's very, very fine bark. So you can see it is extremely fine. This is seedling bark. It's got some perlite in it, not much. It's extremely dusty. So I'm going to be putting it in a very, very wide hold strainer and I'm going to strain it out so that it'll be a little bit cleaner when it goes into the pot. But it's not so bad. I've seen worse. This is um, great for insidiums. If you're in organic medium, then this is insidium stuff. But together with the um, leka that she has, this is going to be fine. And I'm going to strain out all the dust and we will be back when, well, when the orchids have done their soak, when they've been turned, and when I've cleaned the leka and this bark for her. Okay, so while the orchids are having their soak, let me explain what I did. I'm gonna put in a picture. Everything that you see in this pot, the surface of a normal plant pot, I strained away from what came out of the bag to give me a, something a little bit more, less dusty. Because all that dust would end up in the saucer, would stay in the pot, would clog things up. So it looks like I got rid of quite a lot. And yes, there's a lot of perlite that fell through because I used quite a, uh, a wide strainer here. But it is more important that the orchid doesn't have all that dust around the roots. And the lecker that I have from her, I also cleaned up and just flushed with some plain water. So whatever perlite was lost, it's going to be okay because we're going to be adding the lecker. What I've also done was, I'm going to reuse these pots. She gave me these pots, but clearly they are far too big. That's just not going to work for the orchids at this point in time. I was going to give her mine, which are the same brand, but smaller and I have air holes around them, but uh, I only have one. So at some point I must have done a clear out. I only have one left. Anyway, I will put that in for her to enjoy. This is then what I've done with her pots and they have air cones and I find them much more at this point in time with the little amount of roots there are in with those phalaenopsis that we have these little pots are going to be just fine for their roots and anything that were to grow in the next year or two. But because they're going to be so wobbly, I have taken a normal, typical Phalaenopsis stake, wrapped it in sellotape to prevent it from rotting away, and then I've attached it on the inside of the pot because I am sure I'm going to have to anchor those in at some way, I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but just in case, I've prepared this little rig here and I hope that I can get them anchored in. I'm not entirely sure. 
So they're still soaking away for an approximately 40 minutes. What I'm going to do is take some insecticidal soap and wipe the leaves while they soak. Might as well get this job done because I don't know, again, where this little orchid and the other one was living. But if it is living in an area where something is, you know, maybe has some mealy bugs or something on it that's dripping down onto the orchid, there's no guarantee that eventually the bugs won't follow. So the leaves, everything, upside, top side, underside, I'm just gonna wipe them down. And it's okay to do this wiping of the leaves on the underside of Phalaenopsis during the day because the stomata are closed. So they'll dry out. There's no interference. And these leaves are clean on the bottom. So that's good. But in case something is in the vicinity of these orchids, the last thing they need is to become a pest problem or buffet. That had all the glistening stuff on it. And that's always like, whoops, uh-oh. The roots are hydrating nicely. That's good to see. Let's do this gently. This leaf has split. This is not just a simple repot for me. You know, I, when it's somebody else's orchids, I mean, oh gosh, I'm fussy with my orchids, but wow, when somebody else entrusts their orchids onto me, you know, it's double responsibility, really. But I am familiar with bark. I used to grow in bark for many years because the only lecker that we ever had, let me show you this, is this stuff and it floats. So for semi-hydroponics, uh, <laughs> not ideal. So yeah, I grew in bark for many, many years. And I always had this, what I consider rubbish orchid bark, you know, the commercial stuff. It's just not the good stuff at all. I always strained it and I always worked with wet bark as well because I was so fed up with all the dust. I used to live in an apartment and I couldn't just go out into a plant pot without making a big mess. So I used to take it to the sink and then flush the bark out and leave me with big chunks of bark that were left in all the dust. And I used to need a lot more of those bags because clearly a lot of the other stuff was just not conducive to being in a pot with a Phalaenopsis. And that would end up in, in my plant pots on the balcony. <laughs> but yeah, it was more expensive for me to grow in bark than it is in Lekka. And also because our quality bark is so rubbish that I need more. But in this case, it was pretty easy. And I just strained out all the, all the dust, as you saw in the picture there. And it was quite a lot. We're gonna leave these for another half an hour. So they still need a good soak, but we can start the process of removing the vellum. And let me explain that. I could just go with the scissors and chop everything off. Well, I don't have much anchorage material in the pot. If I do that, I just have a stem. So I'm going to just leave the little root strands on just for anchorage purposes. And if, I mean, it's not proven that they're going to absorb anything without development unless you grow them in a super wet environment, you know, like maybe semi-hydroponics or also water culture, then yes. But if you let these guys dry out, these little strands here, they're not gonna be absorbing much anymore. So my intention here is just to maintain them, keep them for anchoring purposes in the pot because that bark is going to be so loose. That is why I tape the stakes to the pot this orchid has got nothing, nothing to hold on to. So every little bit helps to keep her as stable as possible. And that is why I'm just pulling off what is rotted. And based on how this orchid has been watered in the past, I can see that it's not going to be a problem. I can see that with the mixture that she gave me, she'll be okay with watering and not getting, keeping them sopping wet.
Right, let's see if we can uh, rehome these beauties. See if the vellum, and you see the thing is when the vellum has gotten so dry, it becomes very woody. Even after an hour, there is some that is still so tough to get off. And uh, that is just lack of hydration, lack of humidity. A lot of factors can play into why vellum goes bad over-fertilizing, but in this case, I believe it's just lack of hydration and the root dying back. Seeing as the pots are so small, I'm not concerned about extra debris in the pot, velamin or any rotting of that nature, not at all. Sometimes I can overthink things and sometimes it's just best to stop, you know, overthinking and getting it into the pot and helping her recover. So this is the worst of the two that was in the tea solution. And that's all there's going to happen with her right now. Do I chop something off? Let's just be a little bit diligent. These are not my orchids. <laughs> so. Let me see, this is pretty bad. All right. Okay. There's still a little bit left right here. And that will be it. I'll be so excited if she's happy with what I'm doing and if they recover and then start to bloom for her again. Again, if these were my orchids, I would not be doing it at this time of year. I would not be doing this because I would be transitioning into LECA. There's no sign of any kind of active growth going on. So that's a totally different scenario. Ideally, you want to see an orchid in active growth to do any form of repot, but when there is a dire strait like this, it's better to do it as soon as possible as opposed to waiting for anything to happen. There's no good a time as any as immediately. My next step in this process is to get the wire around the supporting stake ahead of time because I don't want this jiggling to be going on while I'm working with the orchid in the pot. The wire can already be there ahead of time. Now let's see. Let's get our media mixed. Now, as this is for two pots, I've got like a 30% lecker. And again, it doesn't matter, any kind of lecker. And I've got 60% bark that I'm mixing up here. There are air cones, which is great, because normally I would put a base of lecker on the bottom and then fill up with the rest of the media. But in this case, it doesn't need that at all because of the air cones. If the pots were flat, then I would definitely do the lecca on the bottom. Let me mix this up with all of the bark. That little receptacle was a bit small. Sterilize pruners for the next one in case there is a need let that evaporate now let's see if we can get the aerial root the long one inside because that is what is going to help us with this orchid in the future 
it is kinked from before, which is a shame. But maybe that kink is going to be our help. Or maybe I'm going to cut where the kink is to get that stump inside. Hmm, it's a bit of a fiddle. Okay, we're going to cut that off. As much as I hate doing that. But we're thinking of the future and not just the present. Okay, for now she's quite low, but that's okay because I want her, I can raise her up afterwards. Try to keep that one root inside. Now, this is my thought process. I'm going to leave her just like that. I'm not even going to raise her because I'm going to use the pot edge as the support. Gives her humidity around the roots. And the roots that will grow new will stay in the pot and not start to climb all over the place. And I'm going to leave her like this for now and see if I am happy about it while I contemplate and work on the next one. Because I could raise her up and then we have a problem with those roots that are very, very vital to be inside the pot. That we have them exposed and I do need to make sure that some water and all that gets into the roots that are in the pot, which she doesn't have many, obviously. So we'll just for now leave her like that and move on to the next one. And then, just to be proactive, put the wire around first for any eventualities. If there's one little piece of bark like this on there. I'm not going to bother. The root is more important than anything else. This aerial root would stay outside. Is that is more important. That is the backup for this orchid in case everything else fails. And she too would be quite stable in the pot as the pot is helping her. So that's what we're going to do. Yeah, I like this and I'm just going to fill up Lekka now. Nothing at the base because the roots are already all the way down there. So just bit by bit getting the media in and around. Give it a squeeze at the bottom. Let things settle in. Right, so here's the one that is the weakest of them all, but we have a root here that we can follow and observe, or, it's, sorry, not we, the, my daughter's friend. She can follow and observe this root. And yes, there are air gaps. I'm keeping them like that on purpose because these were aerial roots. All right, so there's a few that she can monitor. 
And here is the other one where we can monitor, or she can, sorry, she can monitor roots. That should hopefully get some growing tips. That's the plan here right now, to see these extend and grow. I am maintaining the aerial root on this one because that is the backup. So one thing remains now is just to give them a little bit of a flush because the media is extremely dry. Just to water them through once. Leave them outside to get some air around the base so that that dries off. And I have to say that this little repot here has given me oh, a feeling of nostalgia from when I was working with bark back in the days. <laughs> it, Memories. Wasn't so bad. And then in the dish, because the media is new and super dry, I have fertilized water. At this point, it's 160 parts per million. I'm going to leave them now with the dish full of the fertilizer so that they can soak up what they need after this. Meanwhile, all the other stuff that we've done before with regards to the, um, the tea, the cow mag and all that, that in itself is also part and parcel of helping the orchid recover some strength. And let's put all the little cuties back into the pot where they belong. So the fertilized water now is just to get them a little bit more nutrition. If the roots can soak it up, it's there. If they can't, then they've already had what they needed. And I really, really hope that this is going to be something that makes her happy in the future and that she can see her orchids bloom again. That is the whole exercise and idea of this little repot. Thank you everybody for your patience with me with these two mystery orchids and the unconventional repot of me working with bark. I hope that some of these things were interesting to you. If nothing else, thank you for keeping me company. I really appreciate it. I wish you a very, very wonderful day. Please stay safe and take care. Bye.